Welcome to the third episode of Juggle Jabber. I'm in Rotterdam on my way to Gregor Kiok. Juggle Jabber! Hi, my name is Daniel and this is Juggle Jabber, the show where I interview jugglers about their expertise. You can watch us talk on YouTube or listen to the audio version on SoundCloud. This is the third episode and the last one from launch weekend. If you have any feedback for me about the last couple episodes, then please do get in touch with me. You can write me on my email, hello at danielcimi.com or leave a comment somewhere on the, on the video, on the sound or on the Facebook page, wherever. This show is being made possible by the IJA who generously offered to sponsor me. It's been really great, guys. In this episode, I will talk to Gregor Kiok. Gregor Kiok is the teacher of juggling and object manipulation at the Kodart Circus University in Rotterdam. We talk about his philosophy of teaching, about many random thoughts on juggling and what it means and what it does, and don't mind to wander up and down through history, which there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. And I hope you have as much fun listening to this as I had recording it. So, like I said, it's a long sit, so sit down, relax, take your time, and uh, enjoy this conversation with Gregor Kiok. So, um, I was going to do the tears thing on camera, so let's 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 the, do, let's, the, 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 the clinking of the cups. So let's pretend we didn't do that. Do it again, and then we ignore the computer. And then I think what I was going to, ah, yeah, I was going to say, up. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me into your home. <laughs> you are very welcome. Mm -hmm. mm. So, um, usually I ask uh, what we are drinking today, but um, the beer that I brought. Um, <laughs> so, what, what, what are we drinking today, please, Igor? Drinking tea and pretending that I'm not an alcoholic. Um, we can obviously drink the beer later, maybe <laughs> in the second half of the interview. <laughs> <but> <laughs> I still have them, so it's okay. I put them in the fridge, so they're nice and ah, fresh. Ah, clever. That's, that's a beer thinker mindset, because I don't drink really. But um, the yeah. tea, I prefer myself, so this is really good for me. Nice. Mm. Mm. Ah. It's a nice one. What is it? Uh, Negen Kruiden, uh, Nine Herb, yeah. um, from an Austrian company. So it's the real deal. If they say so, if you say so. Um, yeah, I don't really know where to start off, but um, what 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 do you do as a juggling teacher? What's the what's Whoa. the thing? It's a really big thing to start with. <laughs> I thought that's why I want to talk about the beer so much. But um, okay, we can start off that I did try to teach you, mm -hmm. and I think you learned some things. Yeah, so, so I I, have been I, know, I, I know what you do as a juggling teacher. I know what your day looks like. I know what what you try to do. But uh, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> There's no beers in here yet. This is the. Yeah. Uh, what do I do? Okay, well, well, what I can, do they look like? Let, let's start maybe off in, in, in a way. What do I do? I follow in the footsteps of my masters. Mm -hmm. So, Arkady Poupon, uh, who was teaching in Brussels where I met him but was also the main teacher in Kiev, Ukraine, at the circus school there. It's, I would always cite him as my master teacher. Mm -hmm. This really, the, his methodology of how to teach uh, was for me, I think, central and it's the most important thing. And I try to use, mm -hmm. obviously I don't remember everything and I went to Kiev and studied there for three months, so I didn't learn everything either. Um, other than that, I would obviously cite Ferdinand Maria Geiger. Okay, I never heard of this. Uh, he's my best friend and never enjoyed juggling on stage, but I quite happily remember Leeds, the mm -hmm. EJC, where he stopped the gym doing his three ball rehearsal, um, half of it at least. Uh, so what very good juggler, very. Don't make me look old, just look it up on, <laughs> on the Googles. It's gonna be on the screen, so. Uh... Yeah, fine. Um, but I would say 92-ish, mm -hmm. around. Um, that's the first time I played in the gala. Okay. 
See, I performed the gala with my crap juggling, and uh, he, with his great juggling, stopped the gym while he was rehearsing. But he, yeah, he didn't like to perform, so he didn't become a juggler either. But um, his quest for making a trick better, pushing the boundaries, mm -hmm. like a penguin catches. Um, he was like, Gregor, which one do you like better, this one or this one? And I was like, I don't see the difference. And then he said, yeah, but here I'm throwing more to the outside and here I'm catching more to the back. And I was like, yeah, I see the difference now. Okay, one more minute and I'll tell you <laughs> if you go back and forth, which one looks better. But that was the kind of incessant pushing uh, to, 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 to reach an expression, a clarity uh, of movement that I learned with him in a way mm -hmm. uh, because we juggled together as kids and you know I didn't have a teacher then but we pushed each other to be more creative to find more stuff and uh, the people we looked up to were uh, back then we met Peter Davison ah, wow. from Air Jazz he was and using Europe or he they, they performed in Oldenburg and mm -hmm. we were just late for the workshop and then we just grabbed him and said, Hey, Mr. Mr. Show us. We need to become better jugglers. Yes. Uh, we hijacked the video of Karl-Heinz Zieten back then. Mm -hmm. And whenever something was not interesting to Ferdinand, he would just fast forward and the other jugglers were like, Hey, we want to watch this. It's like, we have the remote. And <laughs> obviously, um, influences are... Uh, Ignatov, mm -hmm. Sergei, uh, but then also having a friend somewhere that had one of the few copies of um, Alain, uh, the other. Bob. No, it bounces around, Russian guy, um, six clubs, drops into five, the, um, uh, balls. Yeah, the, the fast guy. The, the, the funny, the, the, happy. The, 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 the nice one. You will cut this yes. out. I'll, I'll, I'll cut this out of his <laughs> name. <laughs> I know his name. It will come back to me. Uh, so, of uh, course, Bobby May, Ludwig mm -hmm. B. Meyer. Uh, great influence to me. And then Peter Davison. And then uh, Arkady Poupon is my main mm -hmm. master teacher. Even in his, in his three months, what did he do that makes him different from all the others who might have had the chance to influence you much longer time. The, the, the difference is that he had a methodology going for the perfect throw. Um, so I, I'll just add Jérôme Thomas mm -hmm. for the performance part. Uh, he's a major influence as well. Uh, but what Arcadie always said was juggling it's not the sport of catching the but ball, the art but the art of, of throwing. throwing. Yes. I've heard this more often, so <laughs> that's why I can recite with it. And, uh, I would um, very much agree, by the way. And um, I mean, if, 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 if you look at a lot of jugglers that didn't have a teacher, you see a certain pattern, like the balls cross um, not below, mm -hmm. but they cross high. Because it's way easier on the eyes, but it doesn't necessarily look better or work better. But it's what you can see if you watch YouTube videos and if you see uh, all the non-taught jugglers out there. Uh, it seems to be a natural way of doing things and ergonomic, but not net ne uh, necessarily um, the most beautiful or the most uh, ergonomic. Mm -hmm. Which are obviously... Uh, I should say early on, a lot of choices in juggling are taste based and there is no single way to juggle. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody should be free to juggle however they want. Uh, but what I learned from Arkady was that you can have a methodology of perfect throws that help you to, to have Lego bricks of building, <laughs> yes, in a performing to be able to way. Them up. So if if you it, like, there's different approaches to learning. There's the global approach. I just want to be able to do this trick, and then you force this trick somehow into your body. Mm -hmm. And the approach of Arcadie was to separate all the single elements 
and then learn them or teach them or follow the student learning them so that um, you don't learn three club back crosses and then you have to learn five club back crosses but to know this is a back cross I can use this with three with five with seven or with four mm -hmm. so that uh, for different heights obviously you have slightly different path but the perfect throw at three high the perfect throw at five high or four high or six whatever um, is quite similar there the deviation mm -hmm. should be small so if you spend your time on, on doing the move with a single ball very consciously then it should be way easier to accomplish that with many more balls or rings or clubs or a Diablo or um, other object manipulation related things. So basically this is the methodology I'm using uh, and Achkadi was very good at seeing what you do of telling you as well like uh, we do a lot of <laughs> random moves yeah. Um, when when we juggle that we are not conscious of and to just drop your shoulders and not raise them is difficult at the moment that you juggle with five balls because you're so much thinking about this and trying to catch everything uh, but if you come back down to it and first take care that you're standing upright mm -hmm. and present and then start juggling and then don't go for five but go for okay this is one ball and then you have all this funny thing because it's quite difficult to concentrate on one ball because everybody goes like oh look at the ball and you yes, don't do yes, this if you, with if five you, uh, you look at the balls yeah, it's relearning uh, one ball I... yeah it's relearning one ball uh, but then you can focus on this and you can think about oh is, how's my back how are my knees, legs, am I free, am I breathing? <laughs> like this is as well why I cited Jérôme Thomas, because he said, you know, if you cannot really juggle on stage yet, maybe try walking on stage without juggling. Oh, wait a minute, go sit on a chair on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was so powerful. That was like a little bit in your face as well this reduction weren't they like taking the role of theater teachers then because i suppose there were other teachers who would also take care of your presence and your sense of body i mean this is the most difficult point uh i teach at a circus university at codarts mm -hmm. in rotterdam where we have theater lessons when we have dance lessons and mm -hmm. we have acro lessons and, and our theater teacher definitely puts us on a chair and says sit down and do nothing so yeah um but then as soon as the students go like oh now it's circus specialization and the circus specialization teacher knows best because it's circus i want <laughs> not theater or dance circus <laughs> yeah then they forget everything like the transfer of knowledge it, it in the fourth year you see that things come together and then there's a more holistic approach to making an act but in the first three years it's such a conflict of I want to do my circus technique and I cannot think about compo or dance or theater. I need to get my four club mills mess. Yeah. So I'm not breathing anymore. <laughs> so I, I, I learned this the hard way, obviously. <laughs> um, but I think I, I, I'm in a good position to help my students to remember. Like I'm not a dance teacher. I'm not a mm -hmm. theater teacher. Uh, I, I, I've done my artistic career and I know a little bit and I've worked with other very good teachers that helped me to, to grow and I yeah this is the the, the the combination to put the theater exercises and the dance exercises at least to remind my students that they should try to combine these things helps a lot and I think this is very important that you like 
I think I would be terribly uh, bored to teach juggling and juggling only. Yes. And for for me, I'm not teaching juggling. I'm teaching object manipulation, because definition of mm-hmm. more objects than hands. Uh, object manipulation, nice and performers. I don't teach sports. Mm-hmm. Juggling, I teach performers, and I think that the the human being is always more interesting than the plastic objects that are thrown around yes. in the air. Um, and you could say, why? What? What are you doing if you don't teach juggling? <laughs> you could be the theater teacher or a, a coach or something. And, it, it is double and I obviously will uh, contradict myself because I very much enjoy technique. Yeah, well, in the I was classical about to say, sense. besides the human being, there is also this craving, especially from the jugglers themselves, to learn these tricks and they want to know how the four club mills match is done. And yeah. of course, three to the right, three to the left. It's good to not give in to these craves all the time. I, I like performance. No, you, you want to balance, you want to balance the stuff and. Um, if if I can work on a seven ring up you know what let's put this in mm-hmm. but uh, if I work on a contact ball uh, in pro let's work on this and obviously the, like what I find funny is um, in most art techniques we are done with the technique. Mm-hmm. If you look yeah. at photorealistic paintings, every iPhone or smartphone or something is better mm-hmm. than uh, Flemish masters. Yes. And not just in art forms, also in sport, we've reached... To a certain extent. Compared to circus arts, yeah. for sure. But there is no ironic five-ball pattern. Either you can do yeah. it or you can't do it. There is no cynical seven ball juggling. This can only come from the emotion you put mm-hmm. it, and the emotion doesn't come through the balls or the pattern. <coughs> the communication with your audience comes through your eyes, <coughs> your body. Um, tea. Yeah, and of course, tea. Yeah. drinking tea. <coughs> really it helps. takes a certain amount of technique to, to be able to concentrate on the. The performance side, so it's still it's, it's really <coughs> a requirement, I guess. Yeah, but you just said the object manipulation in general. This also means that you teach. Uh, well, in the time that I was there, there was somebody practicing on meteor, mm-hmm. meteor poi. How would you call him? Um, meteor. You don't have to say the poi word. What? What? what, what <laughs> there. Oh, and you you also have some experience yourself in Diablo, but uh, luckily it also. Yeah. Uh, Diablo teachers, but I'm sure there's people coming in with skills that you don't master who do want to have somebody teaching them the technical side. <coughs> how, how do you approach this besides using the structure that Akari taught you? There's also the the well, ways that the actual throws. Um, <coughs> like for me, the um, one of the guiding principles is to break down the moves to their ingredients, Mm -hmm. analyze biomechanically what is happening. Like antipoden, I can't do. Uh, Or five footballs, I've never been able to hold and start them, but I taught this successfully to other people. Um, And then it's just look at what is happening. What's the elbow doing? Could he be here? Should he be there? What's the hand holding? What's the head doing? And then just going, okay, try more to the back, try more to the front or sideways. And then find out what works together with the student. Um, because for some things, there is no technique. There is no, this is the best way to do it. And obviously as well, we are different shapes. Mm-hmm. Like Felina, yeah. I don't know if you remember. I've never met her, no. no. But I know who she is. Um, she was not tall. And she didn't have the longest arms ever, so to, to, we had to find a way how to hold five footballs. <laughs> yeah. And then others uh, can scratch their ankles without 
bending any body parts and you go mm-hmm. like okay this is a very long arm juggler we can do all the in between leg stuff without bending at all so uh, why not work on this and abuse uh, as much as you can the physical abilities or not abuse oh, yeah, but abuse. use them um, like I, I fondly purposes. remember trying with harm to find because he's super flexible yes he almost learned how to do a cascade like this but the elbows behind the back of mm-hmm. his head so it was blind bending behind back i think it's 4b yes. and not 3b <laughs> yes like the blind behind the back blind bended, bended, blind bended. bended behind the back yes and uh so i was picking up the balls and he couldn't see anything and i think we got three or four catches yeah. Uh, several times. It's a pity that now in his shoulders have grown to the size of, yeah. of uh, how would you say? <laughs> I lost a juggler, two partner. <laughs> Never mind. Um, he, he, was, he was passing now. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Love you, Harm. <laughs> um, and Marcia. <laughs> so the. That, that was really exciting at, to, to work on this for three months. Uh, to help him to try to realize this Uh, but as we had very little progression (laughs) between the fails we kind of agreed after four months that it's not worth it so this is as well Um, I had Frank Heckman who is a Dutch researcher okay sociologue something uh, who had been a coach for several Olympic sportive people and stuff. And he was uh, doing uh, research for Codarts, mm-hmm. which was called Sustainable Performance. Ah, I've heard about this. Uh, where he said, okay, um, A, teaching is performing as well. Which was like, whoa, what up? But it's true. In a, in a way, you are in front of your class mm-hmm. and you're performing when you say yes that's great but you could do your elbows a little bit more in um, I think you can try better or do that um, mm-hmm. so there's a lot of energy and communication coming from the teacher as well um, so that's already considering yourself a performer changed my mindset a bit and then basically what he said is that uh, all hero stories con- contain a bit of a travel. Mm-hmm. And I really like this image yeah. of going on a trip with a student for four years where you start from an origin point and you kind of have this idea that you will arrive somewhere, mm-hmm. but in, then you find a group to travel with in yes. school. This it's, is your class. It's exactly like the hero story. Uh, Majority, you will the meet party. the dragon. The dragon. Injuries, frustrations, um, all this. And you get to perform at the Mm -hmm. end. And then you come back to your home village and you tell them all about this and they don't want to hear. Because they went for, yeah, you run away with a circus (laughs) and stay there, hippie. It's interesting you mentioned it though, because in the the hero story, the dragon is also a necessity for the hero. Mm -hmm. Without the dragon, the hero would just be normal. So comparing the dragon to injuries... Is is the dragon necessary in the path of a circus mm, artist or juggler? I, no, no, I really don't know. Injuries are not necessary. <laughs> I <laughs> hope so. Oh, please injure yourself and you'll become a better juggler. That was a joke. Yeah. Uh, we well, had... Which does remind me <coughs> of the, was the French guy <coughs> called Morgan, who mm-hmm. was injured and then became a really good foot juggler. But of course, yeah. it's the, not the, 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 what you the, want. The joke was if a juggler breaks his left arm, he learns three bolts in the other hand. So if you break his right arm, he will th- learn three balls. So how do you learn six balls? You break both arms. Um, yeah, it doesn't make sense, although it does make sense. I didn't hear this one before. It's good. It's very stupid. I was 16 when I came up with that. Um, but yeah, injuries not necessary. But I would say uh, I haven't met a juggler yet that didn't have to work out frustration and the tolerance of frustration I haven't had had met a person yet who never frustrated but okay yeah but for jugglers they're definitely 
they, they, they kind of willingly go for it. Even your trick can be your dragon in that yeah. sense. And then it's letting go of favorite tricks. Like uh, David Severins. He had this lovely, lovely trick where he was spinning a ring. I was balancing it. And then it was spinning to a catch. And it was very early in his act. And he, at a given moment, he went down to 70 to 80%. But he got so nervous because he had a 20% fail chance within the first 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's like, I love this trick, but let's crap it. Let's kick it out because you don't need that stress in the first 30 seconds of your act. And it's out. Mm -hmm. He's not doing it anymore. And it's lovely. Yeah. But it's, it's a trick it's you would do for, for a convention or if uh, technical people are around. But for a normal audience, the distress didn't pay off at all. So this is letting go of some dragons as mm -hmm. well. Huh? But what I really loved with this image is to, to be on a voyage, uh, a reise, mm -hmm. of reise zu sein, with the student. So not the, I'm standing here and I'm teaching you, but to go like, hey, where do you want to go? And let's find out how to get there. And then also in, in, in the imagery of being on a trip, to get lost in the woods. Like some students mm -hmm. get lost in the woods, so maybe we need to take a balloon to get a yeah. bigger view. And you get lost together because you're traveling <laughs> together. Right? Yeah. You accompany the mm -hmm. student. And with some, let's go out to the sea. With others, there's parts you are on the highway. And, but all, every student is different. And we, there are similarities, obviously, like club juggler and club juggler, and he's German, he's Dutch, he's been from Iceland or something. But mm -hmm. then to to push as well, to go not go for, okay, here I have my group of jugglers, let's all go sailing today, let's all go on the highway today. Um, but to feel, analyze, and to accompany the people uh, that some of your students at given moments have to get lost. Some of them have to uh, walk on stills, whatever the imagery can give you to tell. Yeah, it's, it's obviously a translation, but mm -hmm. um, the, the, the translation would be, I had students that came in with a quite high technically level, mm -hmm. uh, but were lost artistically or you have people that come with a lower level, but then they certain they suddenly bloom, um, and or realize that space and juggling can be seen as a dynamic architecture. How do you mean that? Dynamic architecture. Uh, if I throw, can you pass me a ball? Nice, you get them here. Now, this is a column, you know, it's a straight up and down line. Mm -hmm. And now you have an uh, arc. An arc. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, the ball only occupies one spot at the time. But if I would uh, do a long exposed picture, I would see the column, if I would juggle the column for a minute, and then I throw the arc for a minute. Now I have this image. Mm -hmm. So it's an architecture of space and time. Yes. Um, like one of yeah, the exercises it's, it's building I, I give you, I, I, I give my students is um, take a Dina 4 paper. Mm -hmm. This is the stage. Now you take a pen and you draw where you walk on stage. You do your entire act. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes like the, the classical Diablo act would be walks on stage, stays right there, <laughs> maybe pirouette sometime, yeah. and then walks back off stage One again. One time to the front of the stage and pick up the diablo Ooh, and oh, waiting Oh, yeah, yeah, if, 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 if there's a drop, it's back. Uh, um, and, the, and the drops, but uh, yes. And, and then you, you take a second sheet of paper, and you just put it behind it, and then it's the architecture of space, and you just go for the height of throws. And if it's round, it's round, and then there's the high throw for the pirouette. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, now make... A pattern that you would think is interesting, fill the two blank pages and then try to walk them whilst you juggle and try to fill the height whilst you juggle and it just switches your 
mm-hmm. uh, your vision. Rather to have it as a cause of what you do to force like, it. I, I, I follow my pattern and I do my tricks and uh, oh look, I found a more difficult throw. It's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, actually this is space I do occupy in time, mm-hmm. in space. Yeah. So, the, the, yeah, this is, I think, one of the exercises where you realize that it's m- not only juggling technique. And I shouldn't say that, or I should immediately add that how you move on stage, like theater is technique as well, dance is technique as well, music is technique as mm-hmm. well. And I really hate when students say, uh, no, but I can't do this because I need to do my circus technique. It's like... Everything is technique. If you're a performer, how you communicate with the people, it's a technique. It's Mm -hmm. clown technique or stage technique. And obviously you can make the difference. Okay, for pure juggling, I need to stand and look up straight and and, and stay here. And obviously I will agree that for your bigger tricks, this is what you should do because it's too difficult to Mm -hmm. learn them uh, to, 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 to tap, dance and Pirouette or modern expressive dance and seven balls in the air. Yep. This I would love to see, but, but that's gotta be uh, a long travel to get there. We'll see what the next generation does, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, what I do as a teacher is. <laughs> We're still on there. <laughs> I follow my students in their visions, and I, I, I always say as well, I found out my artistic vision, my taste. And I defended that. I did my show, Cécile Pas un I played it 180 times. I did a couple other group shows where it was other directors, but that was my artistic vision, my idea, mm-hmm. my development, my money, and to a certain extent, my thing. Um, but I did it for me. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I don't want to teach little Gregors. Yeah. Like I, when, when I watch other schools or other teachers, very often yeah. the students try to emulate the teachers. This, this is of course also a characteristic of uh, Eastern schools often that people tell that... Not only. A, like, it's an image I have that there's a lot of teacher directors who take both roles at once. Yes. And a lot of teachers who teach their own work yeah. to following. Yeah, yeah. I had this immediately in mind where some uh, old school jugglers were big inspirations for the acts. Mm-hmm. Uh, like uh, the, the the air jazz staffs and the hoops of um, you're the hoop Bob Branson Bob Branson and yeah. then it's saying that they're doing very modern uh, juggling and it's very heavily inspired by what has been before never mm-hmm. saying the sources never saying the origin yeah, well, that, that makes a big difference. I mean, yeah, in, in but, my opinion, everything and there, is there. In, in, in this company, there I see very clearly that there's a juggling teacher and a producer and choreographer that push mm-hmm. the, the students to do what they think is good. But I, I'm conv- I understand that Cirque du Soleil or Eloise or whatever bigger circus company cannot stop their tour because somebody broke a leg or is injured. Um, But I still love when I see the individual artist Mm -hmm. express himself. And I really had to laugh when that's going to be political, cut out what I'm saying, but um, you don't have to. (laughs) Uh, We're going to laugh and we're going to cut out from here. (laughs) No, no, no. no. (laughs) Uh, I never saw Traces done with the original cast. Traces from Seven Fingers. Traces from Seven Fingers. Mm -hmm. But Traces from Seven Fingers, the proposition of the show is that the artists on stage are themselves. Mm -hmm. And they created the show together. So it's this origin story of, I'm the dude that's doing that. Only then they had a second cast and a third cast. And they had to mix and match the capacities of the people so in, in the original story, there was somebody who played the piano and could do basketball and did uh, hoop jumping and whatnot. And after that, he was replaced. Then the, the trapeze guy had to do the 
um, the piano playing and uh, whatever did this and the, so and it's like okay, that's false advertisement yes. that's only of course also that a lot of uh, modern companies discovered in the last 10 20 years that uh, somehow you can create with a group and it's easy to replace people it happens in all the I don't even, think even it's easy mostly, especially in this context skill I was is hard because there's nobody who does basketball and piano yeah but Tracer still runs today. Yeah, but the, for, for me, the show, because it was based on sincerity and originality, like origin story of the mm -hmm. people, fell flat because I was laughing in the audience going for... Uh, there was this French dude that had obviously never touched a basketball before, pretending that he was part of the basketball choreography. And you, you know, if, if you do a show, mm -hmm. then the French guy should have been juggling piton balls or... Uh, something that he actually could do, you know that what what the strength of the show was was the original cast, mm -hmm. and then if you see uh, people that uh, you obviously uh, it was a basketball, yeah. If you have Americans that grew up uh, and touch basketball naturally, that's a huge difference from replacements. Um, then you get to this strange quality that. Um, the the sports people have when they join the circus because they just get a costume and a choreography they can almost remember and then they do all their double twists with triple screws and whatnot um, but you see that the act is not from them mm -hmm. they're not l living it unless you really push them I'll make some more tea or should we go for beer now up to you hmm Tempted to go for beer though. <laughs> you want yeah, one as well? Sure, I do. <sighs> the Castile glass of the Chimé glass? Uh, Chimé is the original, Castile is even with goud. Ik ga voor de Castile. Even tillen. Langzaam. Hey, langzaam. Kijk eens zo. And no, yours no, no, no. <laughs> yours is not smaller than mine. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Cheers. Um, I thought we start because you touched on something that I thought I have something for. Uh, we start with a video. Look what I brought. Bobby May. I'm sure you knew who this is, and it's nice because now also people at home can watch this, even mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. normally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. How often did you watch this? <laughs> I bought the DVD as well. So, twice, yeah, the, the least. The, the, the snowman in the front, this is one of my favorites yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, this part. is the classic. I've seen this oh, whoa, whoa, many times. Um, but the most amazing is the, the hat, cane, and gloves. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Hat Canes and Gloves? I'm not sure. I saw the DVD once, but is it in there? Yeah. Okay. Then I've seen it, but only once because then it was taken offline. Um, you said uh, this, 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 this taking from styles and uh, uh, not necessarily naming who's behind it. The the longer the longer I watch Jugglers, the more I have the feeling that everybody goes back to Bobby May. Like some of my favorite, Peter Davidson, Michael Motion. They juggle exactly like this, like mm. the, the, with, the, with, with, with the ball stuff. There's a lot of tricks with the arms stretched out, with the things popping, with the head going to the side. That is very similar. Mm -hmm. Isn't isn't I would copying not and remixing say that everywhere? Michael Motion really went for Bobby May. Oh, he did or? a lot more than this, which is completely off the yeah. charge and original. But, but if you what see Peter with balls, did as well. If you see Michael, that, that Michael motion with balls for me is very um, entertaining, and he's mm -hmm. very clear for for the audience. Mm -hmm. um, but he's much less. Uh, I look eccentric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looks he looks a bit more when he does it. He's like no, no, no he's like bored. But, in the but way if he looks, you go it's, one it's more, Michael Menace. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, the Michael Manis three ball routine is quite nice, mm -hmm. um, but it's not eccentric. How do you mean? It, it's more pantomime. Oh yes, in, yes, it's definitely uh, pantomime. And it, it it's less 
eccentric, funny, offbeat. It's more, look, cruise ship audience. Uh, nice. So I, I would say that Bobby May had the more of an edge. Mm-hmm. Like with the clubs, when he does the Albert and has to run to the other side to catch it. This is off the charts. This is... You have to be a little childish and a teenager terrorist to do that. It's stupid. You don't have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like Anthony Guetta who's like all stuck up with the rings and then does the ring throw forward and then goes <laughs> with all the... Mm-hmm. I would say that Anthony Guetta has nothing of Bobby May and I'm sure nothing you of eccentric uh, juggling. <coughs> He's the best numbers juggler who used to be around, extremely talented, uh, but he, he, he didn't he didn't do the crazy stuff. Hmm. He did all the of numbers, mm-hmm. and I mean it's it is it was, crazy it was, it was to just do one trick that seven clubs a, and and a, and yes. a ball bounce. It has this one trick that's similar, but of course, if we talk about the, the crazy things, yeah, it's and, and the performance then. for me, Bobby May uh, is this elegant. And somewhat clumsy, eccentric. Mm-hmm. Uh, he doesn't drop or anything, but he's he has a certain vibrancy in 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 it. And obviously, you cannot say that's exact the same speed because the the films were turning faster now than they were then. And if yeah. you slow it down too much, you don't see the image anymore. Um, but it's, it seems synchronized to the music, so I'm hoping this is. Mm-hmm. Original speed. You I think, think so? it's it's slightly faster than than it was. It could be. Mm. We'll never know. We'll n- yeah no 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 but it, I I read about like that the old uh, films were done with twenty three frames and now they are played by twenty four twenty five. I would have to look it up yeah, exactly, I've, I've heard but there's stories. like a t- eight to twelve percent increase in speed. That's very noticeable. Yeah. Similarly, there's some old singers who were rediscovered, and then later turned yeah. out to be turned too slow on the table because there's different speeds for. There was like, oh, this guy with this magical low voice. Turns out he never had a magical <laughs> voice. <laughs> Just everybody played him a bit too slow. Yeah. Ah, nice. Yeah. Mm. And you know, there's other people. Wasn't Adonis the same time as Bobby May? Uh, probably, I suppose. And Bramson and uh, Bramson's a bit later. It's a bit later, and you know, Bramson is it's wildly different. Yes. So for Although me, also Bramson is similar to the ones who came before him. There's the American yeah, yeah, family. Yeah. But like Nicole, Nicholson, Nicholson, something like this. Uh, maybe some of your favorite jugglers. Side Bobby May, and I mean, uh, I would cite Bobby May uh, forever for mm-hmm. my generation and my inspiration. But I've seen a lot of like everything that comes out of Sweden. Uh, I wouldn't say that that's Bobby May based. No, this is no. really uh, very different. I think it's Jim Shoe based or something. <laughs> no. Who is this? Jim Shoe? Jim Shoe. Gym shoes, is it a person? No, 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 it's the, the shoes ah. they're wearing, the sneakers. <laughs> the sneakers are way, like, the... This is sne- of course, yes. Aryan, um, they're sneaker-based. Uh-huh. Uh, Diablo, Aryan, Groenendijk. Uh, they did a couple videos together with... Uh, who's the Dutch juggler that makes videos? Uh, yes, Mar- Mar- Martijn. Martijn, uh, and I think there was, like... Back two. then there was also a shoe scene in the Dutch Diablo scene. Yeah. When Martijn was filming, it was about the shoes. Shoes and gravity backgrounds. Yes. This is Diablo of 2006. Yeah. So, you know, there's different trends and, and, mm-hmm. and moves on. and um, So how do you take these moves like, in a way that is not... Without of, too uh, much uh, pretense. Because you, you do use the material. I, I met... Um, he's like one of the most influential strugglers in Germany right now. Especially at conventions, does improvisation a lot. Uh, Stefan Zing. Stefan Zing. Yeah. Stefan Zing. So, Stefan Zing, great juggler. Mm-hmm. Great friend. Mm-hmm. And I remember him being the two, three years younger and not juggling, uh, not having advanced that much yet. 
coming to Ferdinand and me to get inspired and to learn stuff. Of course, who wouldn't? And then my students coming to me and saying, hey, Gregor, you should look at that Stefan Zing. <laughs> and I go like, yeah, I taught him. And of course, I didn't teach him what he's doing now. But Stefan himself goes like, and then I, there was the same situation in France there. Um, I'm sorry, just juggling names. <laughs> there, there's forget. too many. Mintam. Is, I've never heard of it. Mintam? Mintam? I'll look it uh, up. Founding original crew of uh, De Fracto, company De Fracto. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Mintam, uh, when I was in circus school in Paris, uh, he was hanging out in Leal. And he was very smooth and very beautiful three ball juggler. And Leal, what is this? Leal. It's the city? Uh, Les Halles, um, ah. which is uh, the, the, the X market. Okay. So it was outside. Um, Mintam was hanging out there, Jeremy James was hanging out there. Uh, <laughs> Before my time. Before your born. time. Um, but it was the. The meeting point, and like back in the days, everybody wanted to juggle like Min Mintam, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people not only got inspired but kind of tried to juggle like him. And the, I always go to my students, please uh, build up your own library of tricks and mm -hmm. moves, and get inspired by other people, but then try to push it in your personal way. Make it your own. And the, the difference is magicians will sell you the trick. Yeah. They including they, the comedic uh, they don't, side effects. They don't give you anything for free. Jugglers, because they're not hiding what they're doing, they're trying to show as good as possible what they're doing. They cannot sell their tricks to a certain extent. Um, they get copied only very often they got copied badly because the people don't pay attention where the movement is coming from or where it should go it's like the, the one of the most difficult club tricks is flats because mm -hmm. if you don't do them 95 to 100 percent nice they fall flat yeah then they look like crap so uh, but if you see a juggler doing flats, you go like, oh, I need to learn this. This is so pretty. It's so beautiful. Um, and if I look today at Stefan, I go like, oh, this is so pretty. I need to learn this. It's so beautiful because he combines the movement with the juggling. But watch out. It took him years to, to go to dance classes. It took him years to, to combine his juggling with his dancing. And for quite some time, it wasn't there. So it's... And then he really made this connection. But if you get inspired by somebody moving pretty, uh, like Stefan, and, and juggling pretty, like Stefan, go at the source of the idea and go for, hmm, but maybe I should find my own uh, movement style. Yeah. If it's tango or if it's... Uh, popping and locking, mm -hmm. I don't care. But find the quality of movement that you want to put in and make it readable and understandable for the audience. Because something that is close to my heart um, with juggling as well is that uh, I'm very happy for everybody to juggle. But you should make a choice if you do it for yourself or for the audience. Mm -hmm. And if you're at the circus school, you kind of said already that you want to do it for an audience. Fair enough. And not for yourself. If you want to do circus technique for yourself, do it in your bed or in the bathroom, but not in front of me, pretty please, or in audience, uh, because that's fucking wanking. Huh? Yes. Which is fine. But you don't necessarily have to do that in front of kids. So, um, if somebody gets so 
obsessed with technique that he forgets to communicate and to do it for an audience, which doesn't mean that you should go, ha ha kids, look at me, I'm funny. No, um, there's many different artistic tastes, visions, ways of doing. Uh, but if, they, if I see the people uh, that juggle for themselves, I go like, yeah, please, lovely, nice, go to the gym. Mm. Please don't go, come on stage. There you should have an idea what you want to communicate. And communication always means that you have, uh, in the communication model, sender and empfänger, so... A receiver and a sender? Sender and receiver, yeah. Uh, so, I try to say something to you, mm -hmm. and I'm on camera, so maybe to you as well. And on the other end, you're trying to understand. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is influenced yeah. from me being German, from me speaking English now, Indeed. speaking you need to be aware to of what your receiver is able to. And the receivers comprehend. influenced whatever their nationality is, whatever their language is. So we don't necessarily understand each other already by talking to each other. Now, if I use the language of juggling, I, I have less communication problems because there is no uh, language barrier, but at the same time, waving plastic objects through the air, people go like, what does he want to tell me? Yes. You know, very easy yes. is music. Ba -ba 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 -ba, or mm -hmm. da 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 yeah. People uh, are trained from young age to also read music in a way. So more to than understand. Are, more if, than if, you, if, if, if you look at... Uh, uh, movies it's a sad moment it's raining and there's violence mm -hmm. oh surprise so this is how uh, the, 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 the most cheap way to communicate emotions how do you ch how do you cheaply communicate sad juggling you play violins <laughs> on the soundtrack <laughs> so you use music as a tool to use music <laughs> as a tool but then think about it, if you really want to hear raindrops and sad violins to communicate sadness, or if you want to use your emotions mm -hmm. uh, and try to express through plastic objects in the air, um, your emotions. Like the... Yeah. Maybe the club just dropped and that makes me sad. Or there is a way it's just do, a cheap one. Yeah, for, for me it's always the... the important bit is not only that you're happy with your own juggling but the readability mm -hmm. for the audience do you communicate um what you want to do oh yeah yeah i just talked with eva uh trapeze teacher mm -hmm. at codarts and uh, dara mclaughlin mm -hmm. he had a difficult time uh, in tilburg because they said yeah you should sell your stuff or make it more sellable and he was like, but I want to make my concepts. And we're like, yeah, fine, but, you know, already do what we ask you. And she then said, and he spent the next two years writing concept, and then now he is at uh, uh, Circus Talent, what's the French thing? where you Bain? No. Uh, yeah. Jeune Talent Cirque. I think it's Jeune Talent Cirque. Never heard of. Circus Next. Mm -hmm. It's where you get money and residencies yes. to work on stuff. The circus next is French? I think it's European now, yeah. but it was started in France. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a lot of artists send in their video and then some projects are chosen to mm -hmm. get some subvention to get it worked out. And he was one of the happy few that actually got through all the juries and through, it's a little competition, but that's the way they do it. So Dara, I mean, his uh, lights are lights off. Yes, it's a brilliant the... concept. Yes. Huh? Um, where was I? Oh yeah. Was this a choice because he needed to sell out? He made this his light. No, no, like no, 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 no. Is it? That was one of his concepts. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a very good reason but to it go. It works there. really good for audiences also. So he did succeed in the. I should maybe watch the video and listen to myself what I just said two minutes ago, <laughs> and I find the thread back. Yeah. Um. So while you're thinking, I'll fill in. Dara is doing this act where he. He snaps his finger, he, oh, he blows a whistle. And then when he blows the whistle, you're supposed to close your eyes. And then he blows the whistle again, and the stage is all different in a way you never expect. 
which he does for 20 minutes, and it's amazing. You know again where you were? No. Too bad. <laughs> Maybe it was, yeah, it's the communication. And and he, he needed the time to find out. Um, and now his communication is very clear with the audience. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, 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 he controls them even. Yeah, so he clear. controls the communication. Um, and yeah, and, and another important step is is not to get blindsided by your wishes, mm-hmm. what you think. Ah, I was about communication, model, sender, <laughs> receiver. Um, not get blindsided by your own ideas, uh, but to try out your juggling in front of an audience. This is why I defend circus time so much, which is a moment in the week, every Wednesday, you have the chance to perform whatever you want at Code Arts. Uh, if it's just singing a song or showing a juggling trick or acro trick or whatever. But the thing is, you want to build up your performing muscle and you want to test the reactions. Like I gave the assignment to uh, Joris and Arjan and Felix and the students since to uh, make a very sad act. Mm-hmm. So Arjan had the brilliant idea to loosen up the screws of his Diablo. So he's doing Diablo very beautifully, logic uh, for a minute. The Diablo falls apart. For him, dramatic moment, tragedy. He cannot do Diablo anymore. It's broken. That's so sad. <laughs> Yeah, it's also funny. It's, it's, we it's, were it's, laughing. We course. were rolling on the floor laughing. He was like, yeah. no, guys, this is sad. You know, the, the nicest part, of course, he doesn't know when it will break. So it's not even... Yeah. So it was a huge surprise for us. We didn't know what was going to happen. And we were laughing and laughing and laughing. And for me, this was this clear moment of... Even if you think what you're going to communicate is sadness... It's the audience that decides uh, what they receive yes, in their yes. communication. Huh? So, I always thought about how to do a juggling act, how to throw my balls or clubs or hats or whatever, um, and then listen to the audience. And there's one uh, artist who's very radical about it. Um, Okay, that's going to be another minute cut out. <laughs> Dirk van Boxelaar, the original of uh, 2B2. He's from uh, Antwerpen. He went to Isaac, same time as me. Okay. And he comes from street shows and he still does street shows, but now he's, he's having a full uh, robotic arm with a piano on top of it, uh, touring with that. I do know this. Yeah. Um, and he started several times to work with uh, directors. Mm-hmm. And almost every single time he told me, he paid them the full price for the week of working with them. And after a day or two said, that's fine. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> so he's very generous, but not stupid. Um, because he's so used to just try out uh, his acts or his shows. And then change them according to the audience reaction. You always said, no, it's the audience that creates my act. It's not me, it's not some director. It's the audience. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it kind of gave him one color to his shows and acts because they're always there to entertain most people. Uh, so they're not very conflictual or uh, the highbrow or something. But for me, it was a very interesting approach to say, hey, I want the biggest audience the happiest. Mm -hmm. This is my goal. And I don't need any teacher. I don't need any director for that. I just need to work with an audience Mm -hmm. over and over and over. And yeah, he played a lot. Yeah, I can imagine if you... And then his show became very, very, very good. I think for years he had the record of the biggest hat ever. Um, and he still might have. How come then that there's often this kind of response that it's... Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's myself, but a lot of people seem to think that this is kind of selling out when you do something that the audience wants rather than what the artistic vision wants. 
is is it the bad thing to sell out or yeah. is is this selling out or so if you say it, it, if you say I go for on the your values if you go for oh I only can do art then this approach to please the most audience obviously feels like no can't do this mm -hmm. but yeah. if this is your value if and like I had this with uh, in, in, in France where some of my co-students said they would never perform at a supermarket. And I go like, hey, come on, this is your audience. This is like super normal people. Mm -hmm. If I cannot give them joy, who am I? You know, this is, mm -hmm. this is, your, this is people, this is real. This is not people who have money or who know art. Or our art critics, and 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 I, I have to say I, I kind of had to do animation and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but I like it as well because it makes you humble. Oh, well, take a smoke. Only an hour and ten minutes. Ah, uh, that was the break. Th at least ten minutes. No, I I, <laughs> I I I had some more more practical things like things that people can. Apply mm -hmm. maybe directly. Um, first, I have this other video. There you go. There's this guy here juggling. I'm seeing myself. Yeah, well. they're seeing you too. So, why? Why is this the better way? Why does he have to stand like this? To a certain extent, random opinion. Okay. And to a certain extent, uh, as I said before, Arcadi, the, the, the thing is, uh, I would try to learn the most effortless, I would try to teach the most effortless way of juggling, because it seems to me to be efficient and sustainable. Mm -hmm. So, cramping up, having a bad body posture, like a, a normal, easy, basic, good body posture, is very agreeable to watch. Mm -hmm. So, I would start from there. And obviously, if you then get a job at uh, Opera de Paris, to play the hunchback of Notre Dame as a juggler. <laughs> it's fair that you can juggle like this. <laughs> then it's better if you can juggle like this. So then you need to adapt. But I would go for a neutral position first mm -hmm. because that seems to be uh, the best starting point. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had this, I, I tried to explain this several times going for um, famously the joke goes that um, Tsigan, a gypsy the, the birth of the gypsy was very easy but passing the guitar uh, that was a difficult moment you have quite some music styles that are extremely well played by the people who grew up with that tradition, that the people have a deep understanding of mm -hmm. gypsy music or a deep understanding of jazz because their parents were playing jazz, they're playing jazz. Um, and what I'm teaching is a more classical approach where you come from a standard gray, no color yet, mm -hmm. but you can, from this gray, go towards gypsy or towards jazz or stay in the classical music or go towards hey, Macarena, whatever or Dutch pop or techno or mm -hmm. whatever you youngsters listen to today yeah we definitely all listen to techno yeah Gabber yeah Rotterdam represent Gabber mm -hmm. check out Gabber <laughs> I'll put all, all, all the links all the things Mm. No, it's just funny if if, if it's if it's if it's so, an easier way to do it, the more relaxed. Because there's so many who teach themselves unconsciously to stand on their toes, to put on their shoulders. So I wonder where this comes from. Why why they automatically have this notion to fold up if it's really easier to 
relax and be neutral. Of course, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, so th- this is two things. There is the natural juggling with quite some variations. Mm-hmm. Like if you, if you look at everybody who taught himself uh, without watching too many videos, then you have a Darwinistic... Uh, thing where somebody will pull up the right shoulder, some will pull up the left shoulder, Mm -hmm. uh, some will stand like a banana, other will lean forward or backward. Uh, You you see that. You know, this is just variations. Mm -hmm. But then in, in, in school, if you teach juggling, you're like, okay, what's the neutral position? What's the basic position? So you would guess that from all these positions, the average would be around... The ideal also. Uh, the, obviously, the... it harks back as well mm-hmm. to the ballet dance basic position. Yeah. That They've been research- researching this for a bit longer. Yes. So you reference that. And at the same time, you try not to press the students into stems or molds going for Yeah, you have different body shapes. I don't need everybody to have a perfect on the or, um fifth position or, or stuff mm-hmm. like this. But feet parallel, knees above the feet, don't uh, block the knees, be, mm-hmm. let them live so there's yeah. blood circulation. Yeah, this is also injury prevention, of That's course. That's injury prevention and it makes for the perfect boring grey body posture. And if I look at Bobby May, he has a very, like this, there's a still picture. Mm-hmm. He's the head relaxed. slightly tilted, but his but it, shoulders it, it, are relaxed. It, it seems because he, to be of the performance, is the ball. Yeah, but look at where his elbows are, where his hands are, where his hips are. He's kind of boring at this picture. He's smiling and he has beautiful eyes, but his body <laughs> posture is kind of bland in, in, in this still picture. Mm-hmm. But except for his beautiful eyes. They show up, I think he used some makeup. Um, and then he surprises you. Mm-hmm. And I love this. Like, this is what I say as well. I had this moment where I coached somebody uh, who had huge tattoos and piercings and said, yeah, the character I want to convey on stage is that of a little girl, mm-hmm. a seven-year-old girl. And I was like, Whew. you know, <laughs> this might be a difficult task if you show all your tattoos uh, if in you the don't back want to do it in an ironic way, I mean, I would take it in the in the humorous sense and make a joke out of it. But if you don't want to do a, it, it's a, hard. A seven-year-old pierced and yes, tattooed girl, indeed, who is muscular and plays <laughs> and men. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, the, uh, for 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 me, it's I I'm intrigued about piercing and tattoos and in the hairstyles. Uh, so and for me, there's a huge difference between how you dress in normal life, but once you're on stage, you convey so much information about who you are and what you're going to show with your hairstyle, um, your tattoos and piercings and stuff. You just go like it. I can put on a fake tattoo if I want to play that. Mm-hmm. But if I have it on all the time, it's I be cannot harder. pretend to be something yes. else. Or I have to cover it up with makeup, which is kind of the opposite of what you first wanted to do, having a, a tattoo. So yeah, yeah. This, I don't uh, think that's a, important. A, a tattoo is directly but, mixing your personal and your stage life, of course. Yeah. And it, it, this is where we come with that body posture thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so this neutral ballet... This is the the neutral mask of theater. Any color or artistic choice comes afterwards, but you first have to learn the rules before you break them. You first have to find the gray neutral position of technique Mm -hmm. and efficiency and sustainability. Um, Because there you make the biggest progress and it's the easiest to, to learn stuff. But afterwards, please do it wrong. It, uh, can you give me maybe two more balls. Oh, oui. oh what did I fetch? Did you, you just I moved the camera so that you're still in the middle. Huh. Yeah. So the the, the the juggling wise, this is juggling, and 
you really don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. This doesn't make sense. It's way too much effort. But if I'm doing it here, now it's nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it becomes a conscious effort. And it's, it's a control. conscious effort. And again, uh, it's, it's like, um, technically, there's nothing wrong with doing the follow-up of two balls, not showing it. Here I'm showing it. And then I communicate to my mm -hmm. audience. If I do it here, I'm almost giving the finger to the audience. <laughs> you know, it, and just be conscious that here, maybe it's a dog that has the ball in his ear and it can woof woof. Um, here, you're just neutrally showing the ball. Uh, here, you're showing your fit. You know, these are choices. Yes. So I would say, uh, learn how to do it the most neutral way. And then have fun with uh, the different ways you could do it. You you could do it here, and we oopsie. Um, <clears throat> like is is there a difference if I'm holding the ball here? Is there a difference if I'm holding there? Mm -hmm. Where is my variations? Uh, but still know that, like, for me this is a very unconscious choice. Yes. That you can easily make because I see the ball at the yeah, same height. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you juggle for yourself, you never notice, you never think about it. You see the balls. Yeah. But if I do it for the camera on your chest, yeah. <laughs> go pro for the win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might work for you for a juggling video. So back to your question that's why I go for the most mm -hmm. ballet correct, suspended neutral position mm -hmm. to learn basic technique and then after that and it, it's it's interesting like uh, very early on I met Jochen Schell and he had juggled he was the first European to show three Diablos um, which was major back then of you know respect and his act he had after two three four years of juggling he then decided to be a very ballet dancer and there was a lot of long legs and low poses and um, if you change from just standing to uh, bent knee long leg out to do the abolo, boom, it touches the floor immediately. Mm -hmm. you're, you're way yeah. too close. So he had to change his arm position and he had to kind of relearn, he said, uh, at least half of his act, his technique changed due to the dance poses he wanted to hold in Francis Brun. Yeah, yeah, he also he puts very much into position that to spin the ball here. Instead very of the ball easy, here. readable positions, you know, very mm -hmm. like it's easy for the audience to read. You can like it or you don't, but he made a very clear choice. Mm -hmm. And he communicates that very clearly in your face. Um, and for me, the, the, the neutral position is the starting point. Mm -hmm. And then when you make a choice to be the hunchback of Notre Dame for the rest of your life, please do. But I told you what the original, what the zero is. For me, the neut yeah, in, in mathematics, you can't do shit without a zero. And we need the neutral mask. We need the neutral position so we can then become eccentric. Right, look. Like, like Ludwig von Meyer, Bobby Mayne. Yeah, I wonder who trained him. How this, how how he came to be this neutral position? Uh, you actually know? It's just, I it's think just there's a chapter. Bit. There's a chapter in um, Dick years. Franco. No, Dick Franco's Three Ball Digest. Do okay. I have that? Did you ever read that? It's a book. Yeah. Should be here. Now that. We're here anyway. I'll turn around and we show get to show the library of a juggler. There is just a little bit of juggling. I think I have a little. Ah, here. I have it. I think it, is, it says a little bit about uh, Ludwig B. Meyer. It has a couple of nice pictures in the end. It, it doesn't come with a register, so I can't look it up really quick. But uh, no, that's a there's story. definitely Bobby May pictures in here. Yeah. Isn't this I'll uh, look into this later. That's too yeah. bad for you that I'm here and you're not. <laughs> uh, but I should show one of my favorite pictures of all time. So I think it's in here. 
the splits are, are just fantastic. These are all the head rolls. It's the three ball digest by Dick Franco. It was an early book and a great book about head rolls. So yeah, there's no club images. Oh, there's Chris Cremo. Because yeah, it's about balls. It's nice. Mastering the head roll. Three ball digests. I'll check it out. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that's left to say? Is there something that you feel that people need to know about you that you that they should hear that you didn't finish on? Mind brain tickling. Mind brain tickling. Uh, I, I mean, I, I see your brain going. Yeah, the, 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 again, for me, uh, one thing that's important is I have one view and one opinion, and mm -hmm. that's mine, and I'm okay with that, and I'll gladly communicate that. It's not the only one. If your viewpoint differs, great. Um, and I think there's many good juggling teachers out there. And I've discussed juggling and the teaching thereof with quite some of them. Uh, for a lot of things we agree. For other things I have strongly disagreed with other teachers. Mm. Which is lovely. Because then you come forward. Um, there, there is going to be shortly um, a Finnic mm -hmm. reader about juggling and object really? manipulation. Well, finally, they've been talking about this for how many years now? I think <laughs> it's Luke Wilson was writing this, right? No. Um, I, I, I think he wrote something about it at least. So that's already a couple of years ago. And we had the meeting... We did the exercises mm -hmm. for a couple of days in London, but then the write-up uh, so passed from hands to hands, and that took more time and, and, and stuff. And it was, uh, it was the tryout meeting we did there, mm -hmm. and that's where they found a lot ab about how they wanted to do the other meetings, mm -hmm. how to structure them more so it would be easier to collect and to write text about. So and. Jugglers in general, uh, if I just look at it historically and observation based, uh, a lot of the people there uh, close to juggling are computer programmers or mathematicians. Mm -hmm. Nerds. Nerds. <laughs> Jugglers are nerds. Um, and they love to discuss for hours and hours every nitty bitty detail and come up with variations and why does this side swap need to be written in brackets and could we not agree that vanilla side swap is the same as whatever um so i think the 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 the, the intellectual discussion of juggling is just further than most other circus disciplines mm -hmm. like i know that you put two thread pieces together they will discuss for hours they're in French guetre, so the, the their leather shoes of mm -hmm. where to put which hole and uh, which leather is better than the other because some are more resistant, others are more comfortable to wear. <coughs> they can talk about this for hours. And as yes. a jockey, you just go like, they look nice. Yes. Use, use the left ones. It's like, no, you can't say this! And we obviously will talk about if the crossing point should be low. Yes, it mm -hmm. should be. Or in the middle or up. No, it shouldn't. Um, and we can agree to disagree. So one important thing to say is uh, I'm happy to agree that I'm an okay teacher. I'm not the only one. There's many other good out there, even better ones than me. Um, this yes. is news to me, guys. <laughs> Uh, that's all fine. Mm. Um, oh, one more thing. Don't watch videos. No juggling videos. Seriously. Go watch performers. See them live and pay for it. <laughs> you were about to say bitch or what? I was, was going to say bitch, yes. <laughs> pay for it, bitch. <laughs> it's like, 
to me. You can say anything you want on this channel. There's no... Uh, um, if there's age-old drugs uh, watching this. The, 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 the thing is... Uh, video came a fucking long way. But still, you don't see the atmosphere. You don't smell it. You, you don't get the vibrations of a live performance. And... If you live far, far away, and that's the only way you can check out juggling, go, go, go do it. But coming to the EJC or going to see a show... There's nothing that can replace going to the EJC. Mm. I would, I would uh, very much agree. And the thing is, if, if you watch... Bobby May is dead, so I cannot see him anymore live. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy that there's a film of him that was transformed in a video but film is a different live quality as well mm -hmm. than uh, uh, a smartphone camera somewhere and if you see like i every year i go like should i watch this 40 uh, most known or beloved youtube jugglers mm -hmm. video uh, it will just irritate me because jerome thomas i think to my knowledge never been in there no, it's of course the uh, jugglers of the specific year and those who are known by the YouTube audience. Which is but Jerome Thomas, not. He has no internet presence. Yeah. And again, juggling is lovely. Um, and juggle as much as you want. But if you think about working as a juggler or sharing with an audience, then think about it. You know, switch on brain. For me, it's, it's, it's a communication. And I will tell my students, not figuratively, but make love to the audience. <laughs> you know? I'm glad you never told me, but... Uh... No, but you want to charm them. You want to seduce them. You want to uh, communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Not by literally going and kissing the girl, the most beautiful girl in the first row, or boy, or whatever... Uh, you fancy, but there's seduction. There is, there is something. There's chemistry going on, and if it's not going on, then why are you doing this? Because a simulation, like Joe's uh, juggling simulator, the the app from mm -hmm. Köln, is always going to be better than any live juggler because I can just hack the numbers in, and yeah. he's showing me a perfect nine ball nine ball mill smash. And the best I've ever seen was uh, Yasun going for a six pole mills mess and qualifying it, which was mind blowingly beautiful. Loved it. Um, check out Yasun. Uh, but a machine, a computer, is so much better. Like, don't do fire or LED. Or just use it as an effect, you know, for artistic reasons. But if I want to see an 80s Windows screensaver, I don't need to pay to do, to do that in, in, in a live audience. I want to see the performer. Mm -hmm. I want to see him enjoy himself. I want him to communicate live. And it's so much better, like, the music you hear from the bad speaker system of a laptop. It's not the real deal. Go out, check out the Philharmonics. Check out your local jazz scene. Uh, that's that's the real deal. Buy books, not e-readers. I mean, the internet is lovely for a lot of things. But I'm still convinced that we need to be physical mm -hmm. with our audience and this is a great attraction point for circus as well and why yes. I think that we're gonna be strong going forward because all this virtual reality that everybody is surrounded all day with computer animated advertisement in the metro and whatnot mm -hmm. you know the, the, take a walk out go to the to, to the beach to the woods to walk through the city and speak with real human beings, it's important, yes.
Thank you for sharing your message. I think people are like, oh, this old school guy, but I hope they listen. If, 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 Make if, your own mind. Make up your own mind. If people want to find out more of what you do, what you did, or want to reach you somehow, is there a way? Check out the uh, Godard Circus Arts Christmas Calendar. That's probably the best. Yeah. You'll appear quite a few times. Oh, and um, uh, now we're not in school, but I, I brought three clubs of my own. Because you thought I wouldn't have clubs at home. I I, th- I was sure you would have clubs at home, but I wasn't sure they would be within an arm's reach like your balls are. Yeah, but I'm not going to juggle yellow clubs. <laughs> You're not going to juggle yellow clubs? Okay, so this is the, the juggling cabinet here. I'm going to oh. switch around this. I might have to. Oh, no, there, there. Lego collections because jugglers are nerds. I'm just going do, 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 I'm, I'm doing a house tour also, okay, guys? Huh? I'm doing a house tour afterwards. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> Filming that perspective was fine, the rest is cut. Uh, so let's put me back into here. Can you see this? Yes. Lego, you're the real deal. It's a juggler. <coughs> Thank you so much. Gregor. Thank you. Cheers. The pleasure. Thank you for listening to the third episode of Juggle Jabber. I am so happy that I finally got to publish this. It's been a very exciting weekend for me. Um, if you enjoyed these and you'd like to get more updates in the future, be sure to like the Facebook page. You can follow the IJA channel on YouTube, you can subscribe, you can of course follow the RSS feed on SoundCloud and in the future there will hopefully also be on iTunes and on Ezine. and if you have anything, on any feedback on these episodes, please do get back to me, I'd love to hear from all of you. Goodbye and see you in future episodes.